Hey fellas, Jazz here. For those that are new around here, my name is Jazz Stash. I am the developer for an independently developed game called Burbout, which I've been uh, developing for over three and a third years, including breaks. The game was originally called Sunny the Cockatiel, and I was going for more of an arcade game until I decided to change direction and create a hybrid platform shooter. As of writing, the game is $12.50 on Steam and 9 bucks US, but I occasionally like to put it on sale, and there's also a free demo. I have some topics I'd like to get into uh, regarding Burbout and just uh, demystify some of the process and stuff like that, just to cap off the end of the year. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I will quickly want to go over the release. I'm mainly just going off the cuff. It's been a while since um, I first released the game, but I somewhat remember um, being a little bit stressed about it. The actual like week before release, um, I was a little bit unsure. I know like some big companies like to release buggy games, so it made my game that was pretty well optimized and I had taken a lot of the bugs out and, you know, taken all the glaring oversights out. It made um, me a little more confident in um, releasing Burbat. And so when it came to launch day, um, I was hyping everyone up in this in um, our Discord server, which I'll provide a link to in the description. Uh, what ended up happening was um, at that point I'd already been uploading builds for the early access version, and it was pretty cool. I was a little bit, you know, stressed out and thinking, okay, well if it's not good enough, I had basically a lot of self doubt, right? That sort of manifested itself in me just saying, you know what, screw it, we're going to go for it, and then. Um, the release date was the 5th, which was pretty cool because it was on a Sunday. And originally it was going to be December 3rd. You know, that's the last cutoff, right? That's that's like the last point. Um, past that, you can't do any more builds. It's just like absolute um, minor fixes. And I think I kept building past that date, which was really, really um, stressful because I want to iron out every last bug. And, um, you know what, you know what Burbat released with, um, a lot of input lag, actually, with, um, the way the interpolation happened. I provide an exception for that later on, so that was, uh, pretty interesting. For the most part, um, it went well, um, you know, it was a Sunday, so my family was home to pester me, you know, as usual. Um, but it was interesting, um, I mainly, I did actually record audio of me... Um, doing it, but I picked the mic so badly that uh, <laughs> I decided not to go through with um, creating a full um, video. And also, the recording is a .tiec file, which I'm not sure uh, Kden Live supports because I've switched over to using Kubuntu, and I'm mostly just uh, trying to adjust to the daily driver Kubuntu lifestyle, which is interesting. Um, that's a bit out of the way, um, I'll talk about, you know, Link stuff in another video, I think it's pretty interesting, but when I finally released it, um, it was really gratifying, you know, I popped open a bottle of ginger beer, and I was really happy all that day, and, um, once I got that out on Windows, I just sort of had this feeling of relief just sort of wash over me, and I just went outside, and I just stole my trampoline, and I looked out, um, you know, to the horizon, and just said to myself, I fucking did it. I, I managed to do it. Um, a lot of people, I understand that a lot of people don't even get here. A lot of people just, like, give up, right? It's a lot easier um, to give up than to go through with making a game. And a ton of people have made, you know, games and stuff like that. I guess I'm a part of that club now, and, you know, it's good to be here. It's good to finally be able to call myself a game developer and not just some um, unproven, you know, nobody. I'm still an unproven nobody, right? But uh, I'm an unproven nobody with a game under his belt, so <laughs> take that as you will. Um, I've mostly been taking it easy since the release. I have done three patches to this point. 1.0.1 um, was like a bug fix and UI patch. Um, there were some minor bugs there, so I did a hot fix, and then after that, I just today actually, I'm releasing it the day of um, the Christmas update 1.0.2. Um, a lot of that stress came back trying to get the Lynx version working. Unfortunately, um, I couldn't get working on the day, mostly because the build is uploaded, but for some reason, Steamworks has a way of, you know, being, let's just say, interesting. So, I've messaged Steam support about it. Don't worry, Link's build will be out 
um, eventually I'll be sure to tell everyone where it is. Until then, um, it installs the Windows version and you can just use Steam Play for that. But native support is coming. Okay, sorry, um, I actually did manage to get the Linux version working. Uh, just to grab what I said before, this is like the day after the recording. Alright, let's continue. Um, I do have the build upload, I'm just, you know, sorting some stuff out behind the scenes. Um, I've done some post-release stuff, and I'm definitely going to be continuing on next year. I just really want to take a break. 1.1 um, is in, like, planning stages now. Um, I've got a bunch of things I want to do for it. Um, I've got some ideas. I'm not sure whether I want to just go, like, home run straight for multiplayer. But otherwise, yeah. Um, I've got tons of cool plans for it. But I'm not... I'm playing my cards close to my chest, as always. So, yeah. I reckon around then, I'll do a lot of marketing and get some more people in. Because I can do it generally at any time. I can just do, like, a big marketing push and um, get, like, some ads out and stuff like that. It's not particularly interesting... Um, but I'm gonna have to do it. Okay, so the history of the game. Uh, the idea of Burbat was that it was originally an arcade game. It was a platform, it, sort of a platformer arcade game. Mostly based around, like, older games like Donkey Kong and Ice Climbers. Many older builds and, um, the source files of Sony have been archived. And I could possibly build and play them, however, I'm just gonna save them for later and focus on the release versions of the game itself. Version 1.1 and 1.0.x always, you know, take priority. I'm mainly not going to do any more 1.0 point something versions. Unless if I want debut features a little earlier or there's something I just really need to test. I'll be addressing some of the older ways that I did things since my workflow has changed pretty significantly. Uh, I remember, you know, doing stuff in Photoshop and they switched over to like Inkscape and GIMP. I'll mainly be going into plugins later down the line because that's it's that's its own like little rabbit hole, which is pretty cool. In terms of the programming side of it, I think it's pretty much the area that I've gotten like far better at, and it's been it's been interesting to see me grow and learn with this because I used to be completely you know shit at programming. I was originally very bad at coding in C sharp, and then um, somewhere along the lines. I did a subject on it, like on Java specifically, which shares a lot with C Sharp. And I also did with like LinkedIn Learning, I did like their C Sharp course. This was whilst I had a subscription there and whilst it was part of my work. It helped me quite a lot to understand the fundamentals. I gained a lot of confidence and I put in a bit of work to get where I am in terms of C Sharp confidence. And it's probably why I'm going to be doing actually a partial rewrite of the game soon. Not only just for the new content that's coming down the line, you know, I've been teasing multiplayer for a long time. I want to do local and then online, and there'll be like an interface for it, and it'll be pretty cool. But it's mostly just as well, there's a few things with like the sunny character object in Burbout that I just need to like de -jankify. It's mostly good even in the release builds, even as like in 1.0. But there's a few things like the scaling is off and there's some code I want to optimize. I want to make it less modular actually because then I won't have to do a lot of the bridging code. Because uh, like it has to call and pass references back and forth. You know what? It's a mess. I'm surprised the game is as optimized as it is with you know some of the hacky workarounds. Even then it's still mostly good which is why I'm able to you know support it a little longer. And then you know... I'm mostly just, I'll transition over when it's ready, right? It's This update's going to be ready when it's ready, and it's also going to effectively be a relaunch of the game, uh, version 1.1, just as a side note. For me, personally, I think coding is very therapeutic. Unless it's like the really mathy stuff, it's, it's really easy to get going. And due to Unity's profile, like, it's easy to find where I've slipped up, and I can optimize the game from there. Uh, I really like Unity in terms of its systems. I know a lot of people tell me to use Godot. I know some people use Unreal. I feel like Unity is this good mid-range engine and everyone, like, you know, shits on the package manager and shits on the fact that, oh, the Unity logo and blah, 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 blah. I mean, they are providing the software for free. It's not like video editors for mobile phones don't do this, but, like, if that's my best comparison. I sort of see the point, but, like, not really. A lot of software watermarks it. 
if anything, I'm mostly fine if I need to like scale back on cost. Cause look at me, I'm like I'm like one person doing all this. That's pretty hard to you know get done. Uh, with Unity's packages, the specific ones I'm using are SVGs for the vector graphics, which is why Sunny's Art looks the way it is, and you can anti-alias it and display it at different resolutions and scale it and stuff, and it still looks fine. Uh, the new input system, which is really good for, like, input bindings and stuff, and I'm going to eventually use it to put in, like, rebinds and, and alternate control schemes and stuff that people can customize. Last one. There was one more. Text Mesh Pro. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of Unity games also use that. You can put in your own custom HTML tags and stuff. Really, really solid plugin that solves a lot of the default text problems. What else? I really just like the way Unity handles physics and how it handles graphics and does all the stuff that it does. Um, I, I feel, you know, quite at home making stuff in this engine. So I'm probably not going to jump ship and I'm probably going to, you know, stay in my lane and do what I can to make the best with this current set of knowledge instead of just throwing that all to the wayside in order to just start again. I know for Linux it's different. Um, this is definitely better in a lot of ways, but I'll, I'll have to do that for another video because I want to stay on topic here. But otherwise, I really like um, what Uni's done for me. It's It's been pretty good, all things considered. Oh, graphics. This is another one I want to talk about. Uh, I think this is one of the... Like, this is the one talking point that I really want to front-end the video with, even though I think I've, like, front-ended the video quite hard already. Uh, this comes up, like, a ton in discussion. Um, you know, how did I produce the graphics? How did I come with this simple art style? You know, haha, ha, two-bit game, whatever, you know, okay. Here's the rundown, right? I used to use Photoshop with the path tool, with the pen tool. And then I transitioned over to Vector.com with, like, V-E-C-T-R.com. Don't use it, by the way, just use Inkscape. Inkscape is the one I use. Uh, vector graphics were chosen um, because they can be scaled up to 4K, and 2D just naturally has better performance, so a little bit of the extra memory that it takes to render it, you know, whatever, it's fine. Unity handles it. Any Anything with a graphics card in it handles it pretty well. It's generally decent, and it's always been, like, good, right? Um, in terms of saying sprite work and art style, you know, she's actually been through a few, a few good revisions. Um, I remember there was with, like, really crusty sunny models, and some of the worst ones were, like, done with a drawing tablet because of, like, the pen pressure and a few other factors, and it came out really bad. And going full vector was inevitably the best option of, for the game, and it really opened my eyes as to, like, what vector graphics were actually were. And, like, what the strengths of using them are. And, of course, later on, I'm going to do some adjustment to get the line thickness uh, correct. Um, some props of, like, different scaling factors, which can mess with the consistent line width. Um, this is noble on seagulls in some cases, which is why I might do some stuff with rescaling the sprites and objects and then fixing everything up with improved animations. That's one of the big things that I really, really want to get right. One of the later additions was platform textures. And... Even up to the game's release, you know, the UI and a few sprites went through a few revisions. Um, 0.4.3, there was a UI revamp when I fully switched over to the new Boip font after using Lamehex Jagged Sans Serif font for a few years. One of the things that really got to me um, was like, and it shows sort of a lack of empathy and understanding and just a lack of experience as well, is that for a lot of people, um, they sort of wrote Sunny's graphics off. I know they're not, like, impressive and they don't have all the wishy-wishy-woo 3D graphics. Oh, look at me, I'm a AAA game and shit. But they sort of act like, you know, Sunny was always just going to be that first version and then never got past it. Stylistically, Sunny is pretty unique. I think this sort of thing, like, worked out for it. And it's, it's a shame that people just immediately write it off because it's not, you know, someone with pixel graphics. Oh, frickin' pixel graphics, bro. Um... Everyone does it, and, like, it always... It, people always look at it and say, yeah, it always looks good and stuff. However, because of that, I feel like people haven't been um, brave enough to explore, like, hand-drawn or even, like, vector art, which is, like, my pixel art. And it turns out better because you still get, like, the simplicity of pixel art, 
but but like with resolution, like with a high resolution, resolution independent actually, because you can scale it as much as you want. Remember, uh, it's vector. It's 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 mainly based on paths and shapes and gradients and stuff like that, which is really really cool. And you can actually do quite a bit with it. So yeah, um, I recommend. I'll probably stick with this vector sort of technique that. I use in Sunny with all my other games because I actually am not a big fan of pixel art. I think it's oversaturated, but that's just my opinion, so take that how you will. Anyways, now that that controversial opinion more uh, opinion is over, more on that later. Oh uh, yeah, let's talk about music. Hell yeah, um, the music was one of the most fun things to produce. I actually had a lot of fun. Um, it was it was about as fun as like the level design because I feel like that's the two things that really sold it. I have a lot um, of like former experience with um, playing the piano, uh, sheet music, and all that stuff. I can't really play bass lines since I don't really have that good motor function in my left hand in terms of being a trained uh, piano player. I guess I guess I'm just slow like that when it comes to like playing um, the piano. Which is why I actually really like OpenMPT, but we'll get to that. I've I've had experience like specifically playing video game themes as well. It's been really, really good. One question that comes around occasionally is how did I pick up on how to actually compose my music, right? It was mostly just trial a bit of trial and error and a lot of um analysis when it comes to just looking at sort of ragtime and jazz and and figuring out what style worked best for Sunny. You know, it's whimsical, it's fun, it's it's you know, chipper and upbeat, especially for a shooter, so uh of course you have to make the music a bit, you know, cheery and happy and stuff like that. And th- that's really nice. It's it's really refreshing. It definitely feels like a platformer soundtrack. I'm not gonna deny that, but yeah, it, that's what I've basically been trained on. That's how I'm gonna like slice it essentially. Oh, okay. In terms of workflow, um, originally the music was composed into Fermi Tracker since I wanted something to have a very arcadey, like, 8-bit soundtrack, and I was using, um, VRC6 or VRC7, like the Konami sound chips, I think. Uh, it didn't sound great. Um, it, it sort of sucked. And afterwards, I decided to revamp the music in January of 2020, so I went looking for new music software, and I eventually arrived at OpenMPT. I tried out Mad Tracker. I think I took a look at Milky Tracker, but I don't think so, honestly. Um, I don't know. I just sort of arrived at OpenMPT, and I went on FreeWaveSamples.com and tried to match up the instruments. Uh, this was good since I already knew how to use Family Tracker, and I learned Family Tracker after seeing it on YouTube as a teen, and I got it ran into it into 2017 or 2016. I don't remember. I remember some of the retro themes were composed in Family Tracker, and it was really good. And this is why I've always preferred trackers to doors and other methods of making music. I've always looked at FL as sort of like uh, the overly techy solution to it, even though people look at the spreadsheet of M- Open MPT and be like, "Oh, what the hell is this?" Ugh. You know, it's all personal experience of flexibility. I've, you know, learned about OpenMPT and tracker history, and I've fully embraced this method as, like, the real standard that I should be using. Especially, you know, because I'm into retro video games, and this starts sort of with the retro Amiga C64 scene. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Very neat way of making music, and I'll probably also be using this along with Vector well into the future, especially if I can get high quality samples. A few months before I first opened up Uni, I started toying around with the idea of an arcade game, and I want to find a mascot because I sort of want to like finally start, you know, actually making a game. And this was around like the middle of 2018, so super early on. And one day, um. I literally just looked at my bird, Sunny, my beautiful uh, baby bird girl, Sunny, that makes me so happy, and basically said the equivalent of, screw it, that'll do. And I decided I wanted to make a side scroller since I've been making, well, it's a vertical scroller for the most part, but with some side scrolling elements, right? And I've been making platformers and side scroller games in Scratch for a very long time. Since like year 6 and year 7, right? Mostly year 7, because that's when they start promoting it, right? Promoting like Scratch and, um, you know, doing game stuff, right? And I started just trying to draw Sunny. And remember, this this was like late high school, so a lot of your creative drawing skills just sort of, you know, 
get kaput and put to wayside. And it's where I started getting the original design from. And um, around August of that year, I, exper uh, I experimented around in Unity with stock character controllers, playstyle graphics, um, you know, just stuff they threw together. And I started doing some research and showing people and, and gathering some feedback early. Um, and listening into what the developer community had to say, and using like default uni assets and and just stuff to get something. Uh, by mm, 2019, middle of 2019, after some breaks, um, the game had finally solidified around endless mode. Um, it's currently scrapped in version 1.0.2, but maybe coming back. Um, I'll have to get some better algorithms in there for endless. Um, I'll have to revamp it completely, actually. And the code used to be so sloppy and the graphics used to be bad, but this was the birth of a lot of the score-based nature of the game. You know, health seeds, plover kills, all of those were established before the end of that year, right? I'll eventually have to go over, like, the full history of the game. In like its own video, I have a lot of videos in my backlog. Um, since there's some particularly interesting things going on, um, going on around like late 2019, around when I was taking my HSC to like early 2020, that's when like the Mad Hat Classics levels were originally developed. This was when like one point, sorry, 0 0.1 through the 0 0.2 era, right? But, like, just after, like, the prototype. And later on, weapons got added, and then, you know, loadouts, unlocks, and then everything was history. And then the game's concept was found, and was sent around a mix of, you know, platforming and shooting, you know, weapon unlocks, and plovers using your weapons again. And it soon became about solidifying other minor aspects of the game. And by the end of 2020, I have solid base to work off of, including a lot of the stylistic decisions that are in the game today. And that was mostly, like, the 0 0.2 era. I think 0 0.2 is one of those versions that feels like where the game really found its foot. Um, you know, UI looks wrong compared to today. Like, everything is very, very different. But you can definitely tell that this is where the gameplay sort of solidified. Then 2021 sort of happened, and everything got fixed right up and made better, and everything just ended up working. And I think I wouldn't have Sony's development history and what I did be any other way, and any imperfections will most likely be dealt with in the coming months. So, yeah, I can see this an absolute win. And, you know. The next thing we're going to cover is cut content, but I think in terms of where Sony was at now... In terms of, you know, 1.0 and 1.0.2 and all that, and, you know, what's been happening this December. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy how it turned out and I'm very appreciative that I did what I did. <sighs> now, I've mentioned it before, but the White Whale of Cut content is endless mode. It was in the game for a very long time, but around, like, the beginning of March 2020, I tried updating it. And I botched a massive code change out. It was really ambitious, and the random generation just broke. And this was in an attempt to add more level div diversity, you know, as the game expanded. I tried to fix it sometime in 2021, and I just had to leave it out due to time constraint. I do have some ideas on getting a proper level gen algorithm that makes decent levels, and I'll have to do some research on it, namely using 2D perla noise and, like, some other complicated mathy stuff going to be super cool when I get around to doing that, and I'll keep you guys clued in on what's going on. And then we get to cutscenes. Literally cut from the game. Well, there were some plans for cutscenes during the course of Feather Fury's development, so 2021 to, like, the end of 2021. Um, but those were scrapped along with some, like, extra animations for the credits, and the post credit scene revealing some more lore in relation to Diretro. Whoops, did I say that out loud? But yeah, you'll probably have to wait and start a new save file somewhere down the line to see what that has to offer. Oh yeah, and a lot of planning for multiplayer and a map editor has been done, but those were never truly implemented. Some online multiplayer experiments with Photon Bolt were done, but otherwise I left it for later in order to be more, you know, realistic. Okay, on to map design. This was really fun to do, and it also let me um, flex my creativity as like a 2D level design. I used to do a lot of stuff in um, SMBX and with old NES ROMs and stuff like that. So with this game in particular, I tried to keep the map design simple, but try to introduce a few minor platforming gimmicks and interesting screen and level layouts. You'll notice the game has a mix of horizontal and vertical screen layouts with a tendency towards diagonal and vertical level layouts, especially towards the beginning and end of the game. I did all of the maps in a period from December 2020 to like the middle of February 2021. 
It was a complete fever dream shit show, and I was constantly, like, doped up on, like, Ritalin and Adderall. Same thing, whatever. And I, I was constantly, like, on that, like, 40 mils and shit. <laughs> you shouldn't be saying that, but whatever, I'm I'm confident in that. It's whatever, a lot of college students do that shit. Um, but it was all worth it, and I came up with some good level ideas and themes, and I managed to pump out a pretty impressive workload for three months. I basically did the whole campaign then, and after that, it was just minor level updates. However, I didn't do all the backgrounds and music at once. That usually came later. I delayed uh, doing some of the music and doing some of the backgrounds. A lot of that stuff had... You know, delays in the most part. A lot of stuff was just left for later. Brisk Breezeway, so Map 7, it didn't have a background or a song for the longest time. And uh, for that, I decided to reappropriate one of my older songs I composed long before. And it turned out okay. You know, I liked it. In terms of the map roster, I'm really happy. I think, you know, I did a good job of having a, divi- uh, you know, a unique and diverse set of themes. Um, it's a mix of man-made and natural backgrounds, so that's pretty interesting. And yeah, I think I did a good job of keeping things both simple and unique. Feather Fury in particular strikes a good balance, and I also really like Mad Hag Classics and what I did back in 2019 for those levels. I definitely did a bit of updating there. But otherwise, it's pretty good. And of course, last but not least, I really want to mention the community. You guys were awesome. I do have a few things to say, though. There have been a couple of times where the Discord servers have gone under fire a few times. You know, that's right. I said servers. I'm not talking about, you know, side projects. Before the current server, there was another one. And this was running around, I'd like to say, 2019 to 2020. This server actually, you know, got deleted since I didn't want, like, the 0.2 builds getting out. You know, it's whatever now. The Steam version's inevitably going to be, you know, a lot better and stuff like that. Um, This server, it got deleted. Um, And, you know, someone told me that people could, you know, grab my IP or some, you know, something. I I don't even remember what they told me. It was probably some dumb high school student that really didn't know what was going on and what I was actually doing. And they thought, oh, you know, people could, you know, steal the sunny um, intellectual property and stuff like that. And it's like, no, there's still evidence that I own this. Um, I've got, you know, my name plastered all over it. There's still, you know, empirical ev- evidence that, you know, Burbout slash Sonny the Cockatiel was made by Jarrah, Jastash, and Limehex, you know. Um, it's less of a concern now. They have a business name and uh, just, you know, I'm registered and stuff like that. Um, I wish I'd never done this since, you know, I picked right back up on posting builds to Google Drive and I lost, like, a large chunk of my old fan base. I remember this one guy called Wave who was from France and he gave me this cool piece of fan art based on the original icon, and it was heartbreaking to know I would have had more people if I had not listened to some idiot who didn't know what I actually wanted out of my game. It was most likely one of the, you know, again, one of the other students in my high school IT class, you know, probably some Reddit know-it-all. Um, you know, don't listen to those people, you know, you should probably trust your own instinct, and you need to have a bit of a filter when it comes to feedback. Of course, listen to people, that's important, but... Um, you know, you don't have to be rude to them, you just have to silently say, okay, I'll look into it, and then just, like, not, because <laughs> you can do that. Um, I'm gonna be honest, you know, some other people did some pretty shitty decisions. I'll make this brief, but last year, uh, you know, I was harassed by a group of uh, very vitamin D deficient people. Um, I'll leave out the full story, you know, I've sort of, you know, mended relationships with these people and stuff like that. They know what they did wrong. Um, it was basically a fallout on a job I was having him do, um, I tried to get him to do my website, but he did a pretty poor job, and I, you know, said, okay, this isn't working out, we have to, you know, cut this off. Um, didn't get the memo, I basically backed all my server using a bot, and it's why my devlog history on Discord only goes back so far. And then, um... After the harassment campaign, you know, came to an end, um, everyone was, you know, forced to apologize. Um, a lot of his friends really didn't get the memo, but, you know, I came out out of it with a cool story. And, um, if anything, I want you guys to learn off of me, um, you know, get a contract, get, you know, some more... I actually did have a contract, actually, um, but, you know, 
and that's why I ultimately came out of it without, you know, too much, too much uh, ramifications and stuff like that. Because I did write language in there to say, if you didn't deliver this, then, you know, you don't get any any credit, any money or whatever. And I ended up just doing it myself and it turned out way better. So if you can do things yourself, do things yourself. It's worth it to learn the skills. Um, if you do have to outsource something, then, you know, put it in formal writing, be very clear, set milestones, set goals, um, and just have a very defined way of doing things instead of, you know, being all wishy-washy about it. It's better to have things set in stone than to leave it up to chance is basically what I'm saying. So yeah, um, that's how not to do community, that's how rather, you know, you should go about doing community contributions. Um, there's a lot of stuff I learned from it, um, but otherwise, yeah, I think I mostly came out of it good. And you know what, there's a lot of good eggs in the community, I love to look on the positive side of things. You guys are freaking awesome, and you're part of the reason why I still make this game. Keep being cool, keep making fan art, uh, keep, you know, contributing to the community, and just hanging out in the server. Um, and, you know, fixing things on the server, just so, like, when new people come in, there's not any, um, you know, broken perms or anything like that. You guys are cool, you guys have helped, and I'm so glad, um, I could have, you know, the community they have along with the ride. I'm grateful for a lot of the people in the server, particularly, um, some of the people who have been, like, long time, and who have actually questioned me on my decisions, because I don't just want, like, a group of yes-men, right? Um, I kind of want people that actually, you know, challenge me and question, you know, what I have to say with my designs and stuff like that. And ultimately, yeah, it ultimately uh, makes me put out better better games and stuff like that, which is a big plus because indie games are very, very competitive. Uh, other than that, yeah, community's freaking awesome, man. You guys rock. Just keep doing what you're doing, and I hope to see you all soon because you're all great. Thank you all. Overall, you know, do I believe this was worth it? Yeah, definitely, of course, you know, making a game is hard, and being able to say that I've done it is just, you know, a big a big win in my corner, you know, something to stick on the resume, something to just be proud of, right, because this is the first real big achievement in my life that I can definitely say, yeah, it's up on Steam, it's public, and it's on a level that, you know, Jarretro with um doing reviews... Um, with that series, it's on a level that, you know, Jarretro would have never achieved, right? Even if I had stuck with it and got to a million subscribers, I think that, you know, creating a game is inevitably going to be a lot more fulfilling and a lot more rewarding for me. And I think this should be my career, because this is like an actual career. <laughs> I know that, like, you know, the dream of being a YouTuber is real. You know, it is a real job, but it's unattainable for a lot of people. Even being a popular indie dev is unattainable. Anyway, side tangent over. Um, I'll also be updating Burb out over the coming years in order to implement those extra features I mentioned, like multiplayer map editors. I want to create my own middleware, and I want to do this, you know just for any other games that I have a goal of making, I'll probably want to do them, you know, just for the sake of having an existing code base to work off of. And I just want to take this time to thank everybody who believed I could do it and who enjoyed watching me develop this game. I'm so glad I did it since it got me to really demystify the game development process and improve as both, you know, a creator and a person. And ultimately, there's far more to get out of making games than, you know, just money, even if you're selling it for full price on Steam, budget or not. It's just fulfilling, and it's just great that I ended up going through with this. I think this is, you know, a new turning point in my life that I've forged for myself, you know. It's not something that, you know, my parents said, oh, you know, you have to go and do uni and stuff like that. And I am still doing uni. I am ultimately um, tackling my responsibilities and stuff like that. But I'm doing it, you know, whilst making this game and whilst, you know, um, doing what I love to do. Anyways, yeah, here's the 2022. The future of this game looks very bright. Um, we may be, you know, a small community now, but as the game continues to grow and I'll add features and as I continue to advertise it through its lifespan, the game's population will most likely grow as the game, you know, continues on. I don't plan on abandoning Burb out anytime soon to jump ship to a completely new game. Um... Burb has nowhere near its full potential, right? You know, currently it's just a short single-player game with a level select and a campaign, right? I, uh, in other words, I'm going to continue updating the game for, like, a few years before I even think of making another one. So, you know what? Please stay tuned. I do have some ideas in mind for my second and third game, actually, already. 
Um, I've started, you know, writing stuff down, and um, over the break, I'll probably be starting to draw some character designs up just to solidify how these extra characters look for these other games. I might do some sneak peeks, but there's ultimately, you know, some cool stuff mainly related to Burbout around the corner. That's my main focus, right? And as always, you know, thank you all for watching and take care. You've all been wonderful. And you know what? Peace out. Have a good one.